Welcome to the Bible Forum. It is Sunday, September 9th, 2018. I want to talk to you a little bit about the Club of Rome. The Club of Rome speaks again. Do you know a guy by the name of Norman Mattoon Thomas? Most of you would not know that name. I don't know that name, and I'm old. Norman Mattoon Thomas was a socialist candidate for president the last time in 1944. But he ran six times for the presidency of the United States, didn't win. He said in the, at the end, the American people will never knowingly adopt socialism. But under the name of liberalism, they will adopt every fragment of the socialist program until one day America will be a socialist nation without ever knowing how it happened. He went on to say, I no longer need to run as a presidential candidate for the Socialist Party. The Democrat Party has adopted our platform. Now let's fast forward <laughs> to a little, something a little bit more contemporary. I'm going to share some information with you that's been culled from several different sources, the BBC, ABC in Australia, a website called LiveScience.com, a website called Ecology.com, and several others. What they're telling us is that the secular, read godless, uh, scientists, philosophers, world leaders, and businessmen are gearing up for a momentous conference this October 2018. And they're doing this because they have recognized something that you and I don't see. They're seeing that the earth has a cancer. And they have identified the cancer. And that cancer is you and me, the cancer is people. In 1973, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology developed a computer program that calculated the statistically probable end of the world. Commissioned by the Club of Rome. Club of Rome is celebrating 50 years of existence in October of this year, 2018. MIT was determined was to determine just how sustainable were the global mega trends of their day. The Club of Rome was founded by David Rockefeller. Its past and current members have included people like Al Gore, Mikhail Gorbachev, Bill Clinton, Jimmy Carter, Bill Gates, Ted Turner, George Soros, Tony Blair. Deepak Chopra, Henry Kissinger, Barbara Marks Hubbard, Marianne Williamson, King Juan Carlos I of Spain, and most former United Nations general secretaries and high-ranking officials. The Club of Rome advocates for a global government. They honestly do not see any hope for humanity without one. What MIT discovered, however, using available data, was that at about the time President Trump is facing re-election, things are going to get pretty bad. They said extremely bad. And the longest we can last after that will be 20 years. By 2040, civilization will come to an end unless we do something. They said this 50 years ago. 
The stated mission of the Club of Rome is to, quote, act as a global catalyst of change. How? Well, according to Encyclopedia.com, they say by sponsoring studies, conferences, and issuing reports that focus on long-term global problems and interrelationships. Their concerns? The depletion and pollution of the environment. Demographic problems of both growing and aging. Uneven development within and between nations. The decline of traditional values. Dysfunctional governments. The quality and distribution of work. The social-cultural impact of new technologies dysfunctional educational systems, the globalization of the economy, and international financial disorder. Did you notice these are all things this group and any other group you can think of cannot control? Such is the arrogance of mankind. The Club of Rome was conceived with the purpose of slowly grinding the free market economy down. Free markets are not controllable. Their strategy is to slowly pervert capitalism through successive state interventions until a point is reached when society can no longer support itself and collapses on its own weight. Then, apparently, a global government will emerge. And it no doubt will be them. Now do you understand the Obama administration? the Johnson administration, the Clinton administration, and in lesser ways, just about every administration since the 1960s. Reagan openly complained about this effort, even within his own administration, areas he could not control, areas he did not know anything about until they did something. And yet Reagan surrounded himself with Irish Roman Catholics. The Club of Rome was founded in Rome. Not exactly a coincidence. Reagan's heritage was Irish Catholic. If it was a high-profile, high-political appointed office, it went to an Irish Catholic. If it was a social program, either advocated, pursued, or simply given lip service, it was in line with the Roman Catholic Church. Abortion, equal rights amendments, school prayer, domestic family planning, international po uh, population assistance, constitutional government, or conventions, I'm sorry, tuition tax credits for parochial schools, Global 2000 Report, Environment, Sex Education, Military Environment in Lebanon, Gay Civil Rights, Illegal Immigration. Roman Catholic Church is pro. Reagan's government refused to deal with it. Illegal immigration, he wouldn't touch. And there's so much more. On August 6, 1984, columnist Mary McCrory suggested President Reagan come on, comes on as more Catholic than the Pope. Now, today, from Rome, the prediction that life on the planet Earth cannot be sustained past 2040. Does anybody in my audience remember my railings in the year 2006, 7, and 8 about something called Agenda 21? 
I did a couple of programs on that, several hours, and the response that I got from that ranged from, what? To, you're crazy. To, who cares? And all of that largely because nobody understood it. I didn't. Well, it's back. You see, this is Agenda 21. Expanded out 19 years. And the point here is being made by the Club of Rome <laughs> that the Earth cannot sustain life past 2040. Therefore, apparently, we, those who recognize the danger and can do something about it, must act. How? Well, they claim that in part a major shift has to occur. Anybody remember me talking about the shift? I remember one of my cohorts in crime at the radio station in Wilmington who had his own morning show, and I helped out with that, and he helped me, and we talked a lot about stuff. And I talked about the shift, and he says, What are you? talking about. He had no clue and no interest. Back then it was just largely a confusing, befuddling concept and the audience didn't get it. In 1992 a former president of the United States by the name of George Bush Sr. said, quote, the effective execution of Agenda 21 will require profound reorientation of human society. Unlike anything the world has ever experienced, a major shift in the priorities of both governments and individuals and of unprecedented redeployment of human and financial resources. The shift will demand that a concern for the environmental consequences of every human action be integrated into individual and collective decision-making at every level. And the Club of Rome's analysis? They say, quote, the earth has cancer, and the cancer is man. One of the solutions proffered by the Agenda 21 people and the Club of Rome was to slowly grind free market economics down, to pervert capitalism until a point is reached when society can no longer support itself and simply collapses. They said this in 2018, or this is a quote from something called Guardian Council 2018. You can read about it on goingpostal.com. Alexander King, then a leader of the Club of Rome, evaluated the program's results to also mean that nation states will lose their sovereignty, forecasting a new world order with corporations managing everything. About this same time, we started hearing about a new world order without knowing exactly what it was all about. Sovereignty of nations is no longer absolute, King told the Australian Broadcast Network. There is a gradual dis diminishing of sovereignty little bit by little bit. Even then the big nations, this will happen. Why the discussion of the Club of Rome now? Because on October 28th, they will celebrate 50 years of effort. A two-day conference is planned to discuss sustainability challenges for a world of 10 billion people. Six sessions are planned. One, addressing a planetary emergency, global climate change. Another one, what economy is needed for a world of 10 billion people. Thirdly, implementing the Sustainable Development Goals. Fourthly, prospects for renewable energy and a true green economy. Number five, ensuring humanity survives the Anthropocene, 
a time period dominated by an anthropogenic, man-influenced world. Number six, human values for the Anthropocene, which appears to be an effort to coin a new subdivision in geologic time. The Anthropocene refers to a proposed epoch, something existing from the commencement of human impact on Earth's geology and ecosystems to the anthropocentric climate change, one that is centered on human beings, something they see as inevitable. So, well, I find it fascinating that it's the Club of Rome. With all the biblical eschatological implications, the Club of Rome is a global religious, economic, and political enterprise. Every priest of the church is connected to Rome. Every decision of Rome is quickly communicated to every priest. The Roman church has a global financial system and a global communication system with one global religious purpose. No other religious system on earth or in earth's history has ever had anything like it. Then there's the social, political, governmental, economic catastrophe that signals the rapture of the church. Billions of people simply disappearing from the earth. The tremendous chaos that all of that will present and the impact on all the systems of mankind. Will TV stations go off the air for a while? Will the internet suffer? How about transportation systems, financial systems? And will it be the Roman Catholic Church who alone will still or more quickly be able to establish the vital communications necessary to move people, information, money, and medical care all over the globe? Keep in mind, Human beings will not, cannot destroy life on planet Earth, largely due to the reality that God sustains it, not mankind, not even natural events, and has outlined at least a thousand years of continued life on planet Earth after the so-called cataclysmic event that scholars have dubbed the rapture a phrase not found in the Bible, although the event is implied. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those who have already died, Christians that are gone. They're not going to be here when Jesus comes. Don't worry about that. I don't want you to sorrow over that as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep are dead in Christ will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Lots of strange things going on, lots of maneuvering, lots of moving of the pieces in the parts, a lot of dates being thrown around. And 2040 is not that long off, and definitely 2020 is not. These people are getting ready. Are you ready? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Or are you going to wait and see how it all pans out first? 